Hello, this is Lori Clausen coming to you today with another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. This is a podcast intended for small business owners, new entrepreneurs, or maybe experienced entrepreneurs, startups, anybody that is out there trying to use organic content marketing to help grow and scale their businesses. So today we have an incredible guest. His name is Marcus Schaller. I can't wait for you to meet him. He has so much experience, even more than I do. Very honestly, I've been in business 13 years and he's been like 20 plus. So I'm so excited for the tips and tidbits and advice that he's going to bring to us today. Welcome, Marcus. Hello, Marcus, and welcome to the Making Sense of Social Media podcast. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Um, In a nutshell, I've been involved in marketing to some degree or another for a little over 20 years. Most of that time has been spent in either consulting or coaching with everything from like entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, small, very small businesses, and more recently working with like some slightly larger SaaS companies, you know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe five, 600 employees and wow, focusing on cool. things like, yeah, like, you know, bigger, I mean, again, you think about big companies are really like, you know, maybe 10,000 people, whatever. So, yeah. but uh, you know, things about messaging strategy, copywriting and, and in all of that time, coaching has been a big part of what I do with clients, but I've now recently, okay. uh, I'm focusing 100% on transitioning to coaching specifically, uh, not related to like, you know, then writing copy for somebody or whatever. So I'm in a bit of this interesting transition in my own career, which I'm very excited about. So, well, I love that for you. And I think that's why you and I resonate so much with Mm -hmm. each other because I'm doing the exact same thing. So very cool. Well, I'm really excited to talk about content marketing with you today. So I have a bunch of questions for you and I'm just going to dive on in if you're ready. Let's do it. Amazing. All right. So question number one, what are the main goals of creating and distributing content on your social media platforms? Okay. So, you know, one thing to think about is that to always think about it from the point of view of what's the point of content to begin with, right? So Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but, you know, back in the day before it was called content marketing and Seth Godin wrote a book called Permission Marketing, and it was really kind of the beginning of content online, right? You had right. newsletters and things like that. And the whole idea was instead of advertising to people or only advertising or only doing cold calling, whatever, can you create resources, and information that's useful, that helps them solve a problem? Mm. And in doing so, you'll create a relationship with them. You'll start providing value and then open the door to a conversation that of course can hopefully lead to a sale or them becoming a client. So I always start from that position, right? So what what is ultimately the goal, whether it's on social media, like technically social media, or whether it's something like, you know, even a newsletter is not like not specifically social media, but they're all interrelated, right? Absolutely. And I kind of look at it from that angle. Like, what can you create? The goal is like, you know, can we create something that is really useful? And that gets harder, right? Because now there's so many. There's so much content out there and don't even get me started about chat GPT and all that stuff, right? We could talk about that too, but oh, there's no goodness, lack of, yes. yeah, there's no shortage of content now, right? So now the challenge isn't about even like, how do we, how do we create useful content is how do we create something that is, that is, that breaks through a lot of the noise that we're seeing. Yeah. Gets them to stop scrolling and go, oh, I like this one. This means something to me. Yeah. And there's, you know, that we could talk more about specifically how to do that. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but you know, one of the, one of the goals is really like, you know, if you're going to create something useful for people, you have to start with thinking about a person, right? Because there's no such thing. as There's no such thing as an audience. There's people, you know, a person. And you think about who is that person? Why would they care about this information? What is that going to do for them? Why, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, kind of an idea of it, like what's on their whiteboard? What is the problem they're dealing with? And, mm. and if you can match to that, but that involves really being very specific, which gets into a lot of the, you know, the tactical stuff too. So. Right. Oh, that's such an excellent answer. I love it. All right. So how do you measure the effectiveness and impact of your social media content? Um, mm. Do you have some key metrics or tools that you use to determine effectiveness? 
Yes, I, I think well, I'll start with how I don't determine effectiveness, which is <laughs> with the vanity metrics, right? I I, I look right. at it. I'm like everybody else. I love it when people like my links or my, I mean, my LinkedIn posts and my, yeah. I love it, right? I'm not going to say I don't care about that, but that's not to me. It is a means maybe to an end. It helps boost it a little bit. It helps expand the reach, which is of course useful, but that right. by itself is not a, a useful metric um, other than for my ego, right? So right. Which maybe uh, yeah. just because it keeps you going, right? If somebody's paying attention, <laughs> maybe that's something good, right? Totally. I think, you know, with the metrics thing, I can't say that I have a specific metric or measurement that I, a formula that I go by. Uh, certainly the best case scenario is somebody listens to my podcast or somebody reads my blog or somebody sees me on a podcast like this and they reach out. That's like the right. way, right? You know, totally. they, they want to start a conversation. There's <laughs> steps in between. There's like, you know, are they even subscribing to your podcast? Are they, are you building that relationship slowly? So subscriptions could be a metric, right? Right. Uh, again, leading to the ultimate goal of a conversation, at least in my opinion. And ultimately too, there's kind of a hidden goal or a, a metric that's that's not necessarily something that you can measure, which I guess doesn't make sense if I say metric. But if if I have on my website lots of content that I've put a lot of time and energy into creating that I feel is useful for a specific audience, right. if I have that content on YouTube, if I have that on a podcast, if I put that on LinkedIn, if somebody comes across my information through some other means, let's say it's a referral or whatever way they see me, right? they don't necessarily just like, email me right off the bat. They'll go to my website. Maybe they'll go to my LinkedIn. They'll do a little digging. Right. And For so sure. that content, if they, I put everything on LinkedIn, I put everything on my website. So hopefully they're looking through and they're getting a sense of who I am, what, how I think the things that I focus on. So I might not ever be able to truly measure that. I could certainly ask mm -hmm. people where they heard about me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's, when people, when I think about content marketing, even for a larger company, even for a SaaS company, it's not just, you know, are you getting a lot of reach? Are you getting a lot of traffic? It's, is the VP of, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the CMO or whoever it is you're trying to sell to, are they finding stuff on your website or on your LinkedIn that is so valuable that it's actually moving them forward toward a conversation? And that's very hard right. to measure. It is hard to measure, but I, it's such an important point is that it, it truly is all about building those relationships. And that's mm -hmm. the entire point uh, of content marketing. So, oh, I love that. So good. Um, all right. Next question. What are some best practice uh, tips for creating engaging and relevant content for your target audience? So maybe some of your little tips or yeah. tricks or gadgets or what what have you. Outside of AI. I mean, unless yeah. you want to talk about AI, because <laughs> I'm a big fan, I got to say. Are you good? <laughs> yes, um, I am. So I, I'm still getting, well, let's start with AI, because I think it's relevant, right? And I and mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to dissuade people from using it. What I will say is realize that uh, writing well, and let's just, you know, most content is written form, even if it's a podcast, yes. even if it's, there's some kind of writing element to it. Yeah. That at this stage and foreseeably for the for many years to come ai and algorithms and machine learning does not have a sense of empathy it doesn't have a sense of context mm -hmm. it doesn't have a sense it doesn't have a point of view it certainly doesn't have your point of view right Correct. so yeah. if if i'm seeing a lot of this i'm sure you are too where you know i'm even seeing this on responses or comments on my linkedin posts you know they're just obviously somebody copied and pasted my post it it bed over whatever it just kind of regurgitated a comment that seems like it's relevant and kind of mentions key points and but there's nothing to it you can tell it's yeah. not even... yeah. to me that kind of use of any kind of technology is absolutely the wrong way to go now where it can be useful is let's say you want to write a blog post but you're not a strong writer you don't feel confident in it or maybe you have to you're trying to come up with some ideas certainly the tools can help you polish things or outline a brainstorm, whatever, like there's a good way to use it. But at the end of the day, remember that you're writing or you're creating content for people. And there's enough robotic content out there that was written by people to begin with, right? There's a lot yeah. of stale, lifeless 
uninteresting stuff out there, whether it's written by a bot or whether it's written by a person, doesn't really matter. Yeah. It also lacks your own point of view. So if you're building a company from scratch, if you're a coach, if you're a consultant, your greatest asset in creating content is your own point of view, your own experience. What I would say is a best practice is start with you. Start with what you deeply care about that what you care about is going to translate to the people that you naturally should be working with. So that kind of yeah. answers another problem about clients, what kind of clients, um, but be yourself, be, be true to yourself. You have a voice, even if you're not a creative person, everybody's creative, you know, not everybody identifies yeah. as creative. You have your own voice. I'd say just know what that is, trust it, refine it, improve it over time, but just like drive a bus through that basically. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to go off. I love this so much. And I'm going to go off script just a little bit here. But yeah. something that you said, just tweaked a thought, like as you coach small business owners and maybe new business owners about how to create this type of content and be, you know, produce what they're passionate about, mm. that doesn't, it still sometimes is hard for people who lack self-confidence or self-worth. Mm. Like how do you mm coach small business owners how to have confidence in what they're doing and like show them that yes you can do this anybody can do this but not mm. everybody believes that even if they're passionate about what they do right yes yeah that is i think that is a huge sticking point whether it's they don't have confidence in their the the value of their own ideas or where they don't feel confident as a writer or a cre you know like technically yeah. like writing a post that's readable and there's, you know, there's a few ways to go at that. One is that, first of all, to be aware of it, right? To, to yeah. admit it to self -aware. ourselves. Self-aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to self-awareness and be able to say, you know what? This is uncomfortable. And a lot of this will be uncomfortable. Like, you know, even if you I'm know. writing, right? <laughs> if I'm creating content for a client, I don't know if they're going to like love it or think like, oh, you know, you get it back a draft with all these marks and whatever. Yeah. No, that's not great confidence builder. Right? And it's <laughs> it's, know, uncom right? it's uncomfortable. So that <laughs> leaning into that discomfort, and I think this applies to every aspect of being a human being and especially business, is being able to lean into that discomfort and really realize that you're not alone in this, that imposter syndrome is quite common, especially when it comes to yes. sharing our opinions or point of view on a social like LinkedIn or or being really kind of overt about it, right? The mm -hmm. act of putting out a podcast like you were doing is a is an act of confidence, right? It is <laughs> shouting to the world that you have something to share. Uh, yeah. And not everybody's as comfortable doing that. Uh yeah. so I would say be, you know, be kind to yourself and recognize that you are feeling what you're feeling. Uh, a lot of this is emotional. And then it goes back yes. to even if you look at what you do and you're lacking confidence about its validity or value what i would not do is is look to others or other companies as being the benchmark for how to be because mm -hmm. you can look at it for like you know maybe some good technical tips right there's certain things about like when you post is you know better times than yeah. others whatever but don't if you're not confident about your own voice don't just mimic the corporate lingo and think that's the right way to do it because or the latest influencer or something. And especially the latest influencer. <laughs> and and I and I include, I mean, I'm not an influencer. So let me make that category right there. I'm not putting myself in that in that in that category. But like even myself, whenever I like when I coach people, it's not about advice. It's about helping. I'm a thinking partner. It's about helping them clarify their own thoughts and ideas I love that. and discover their own solutions, right? So even like as much as I like to give advice in a conversation like this, it's everything you take with a grain of salt, right? Totally. It's test everything, always ask questions and don't take anything for granted. Even the term best practice is something that I've posted my own little rants about that term, you mm -hmm. know, because yeah, best practice fair. implies that there's no better way to do it. It's just like, I've, you know, I've worked with people that oh. they're like, oh, the best practice is this. And it's kind of like shutting down the conversation, you know? So as she changes her LinkedIn profile. What's that? <laughs> I what said, as she changes her LinkedIn profile. Oh no, I'm sorry. See, this is the thing is <laughs> no, too. No, no, I love no, it. No, this is a good, this is a good point. <laughs> this is actually brings up a really good point. 
and this has happened to me actually not just right now but recently on LinkedIn if you express your your own truth right your own point of view you will put your foot in your mouth <laughs> you will absolutely put your foot in your mouth and that's okay absolutely. and yeah. you know it's sometimes whatever so it again, builds character it build it all this is going to build character for sure yeah. for sure I have, I want to share a little story. So again, something you said tweaked a, a memory when you said, you know, if a client returns a blog post that's filled with red marks and change mm. this, change that. I used to have a client that they were, they are a large um, nursery company. Mm. So they, you know, they grow plants and then they sell them to companies like Walmart and Costco and what have you. And one of the very, after they hired me to, to create their content for them, one of the very first posts I put out um, had a bunch of plants, of course, because mm. they're a nursery. And um, <laughs> sorry, I just find this so hilarious. The CMO at the time wrote me back saying, Lori, green in, in the world of nurseries, green is not a color. And I was like, pardon? How is your, it's plants. How is yeah. So, I'm yeah, intrigued. That, I'm intrigued by yeah. this. You have me. What? what? Well, it was just it, I, his his um, train of thought was that nurseries want to see like pinks and oranges and yellows and like because mm -hmm. every plant is green, so mm -hmm. therefore it doesn't overly distinguish or set themselves apart, kind of thing. So yeah. it just happened to be the very first piece of content that I created for him, and it was like. After, you know, as long as I've been doing this, <laughs> I was like, mm. uh, I, yeah, I, my confidence was knocked down a, a few steps after that, but it, it oh, all I've, worked out for the best. I can totally relate to that. And, and I used to, you know, quite a few years back, I, I used to be very um, insecure about asking questions at the beginning of the mm. project. Cause I, I had this weird, you know, this weird self-esteem thing where I felt like I should like be able to knock it out of the park blind, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, Oh, you yes. know, even for people listening that they're not necessarily doing these kinds of projects for somebody else where, you know, you can even think of it for yourself, the right, a, a, a good, I don't want to say the right starting point, a good yeah. possible starting point, right, is imagine you're your client and ask yourself the questions, figure out like, what are the parameters there, right? So as mm. professionals working with a company, you and I might say, okay, let's have a brief, let's, let's have a discovery call about this project, they yeah. should hopefully provide you a brief with all that, but they don't. We know that, right? So, yeah. Oh, you know, do you we have ever. That, <laughs> right? You have that discovery yeah. call and you ask the questions <laughs> and you define these kinds of things. You won't get all of them, but you define a lot of these kind of big chunks, right? So that you're right. not wasting your time going in a direction that's just the total opposite. You can do the same thing for yourself. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, what, what should I write about or what do I want my first 10 topics to be? Don't necessarily, you don't have to start with listing 10 topics. You can ask yourself as if you were a copywriter writing for a client. You say, well, what is the, what are the problems that your clients are going, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm, and, totally. but you know, that can, can be a way to kind of get past yourself and worrying about, because ultimately if you're thinking like, I'm not good enough, my ideas don't matter. Your ideas don't have to matter. What you need to do is focus on what do other people need? If you focus on what other people need, your own sense of like worthiness just doesn't really, it shouldn't yeah. have as much of an impact. Exactly. Oh, that is gold. I love that so much. Yay, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Yay me. I already know that by the end of this conversation, my ego is going to be well inflated. So cheers. <laughs> cheers. All right. Next question. How do you balance the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds social media marketing content? Got it. Um, as you can tell, I have opinions. Right? And, I love them. And, and I'm not shy about it. It doesn't work very well for past situations where I was in more kind of rigid cultures that don't like opinions. But this is one of those debates that I just have never wrapped my head around and understood why mm. it's a debate. I don't th personally think that there is a case for quantity without quality. Again, mm. there is no shortage of content. Right. There's nobody on LinkedIn going, darn it. Nobody's posting right? <laughs> or, or, or podcast fans going, darn it. There's no new shows to explore. Like, <laughs> there is so much quantity out there. 
right? Yeah. So the idea of that question when people, and you're, you're not the, obviously the first person to ask it, it's like, you know, you see it all over the place is, well, what would be the opposite of that? Quantity without quality? Like, how would that work? Are you mm. just going to turn? And we're seeing that now, especially with ChatGPT. We're seeing, we're just going to churn it. We're going to do the checklist, blog post, do, 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 do. and it's, you know, I mean, my opinion, it is not useful, right? It is not helpful. It is just more words or more videos or more stuff. And so I go back to like, what is the, for myself, right? And we'll use the example of this new podcast and I'm going to do a little self, you know, gratuitous self-promotion here. Yes, the, new please. Pod, the new podcast I just launched that's related to the coaching. It's just all about the problem side, solving side of things, right? And it's, I, I thought about like, ultimately I want to, I want to write an, a book based on this one. I can't sit down and spend six months just writing it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a little bit at a time. And so I committed to, I'm going to post every day. So that post is a podcast, it is a YouTube, it is a blog post, it is a LinkedIn post. It's even on Instagram, even though I don't have any followers on Instagram, oh. right? <laughs> right? Oh, so it's, it yeah. lives in all these different places because different mm -hmm. people like to consume things in different ways. Yeah. So I made that commitment, but I made the commitment knowing that I'm not going to do it unless I can do it well. So every mm -hmm. day in the morning, especially because that's my kind of prime time, I spend a lot of time writing whatever that is, right? Yeah. And editing and then recording it. And, da, 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 da. and it's easier for me and faster for me because I've done it a lot. So it's, you get into a groove, but it's still a commitment. If I felt that I couldn't keep up with that, I would not do it that at that cadence. And, you know, my yeah. other podcast that has to do with marketing was a great example. I started that out when I was in between gigs and I was like, I was, I was leaving an agency and I didn't have anything lined up, not a great idea, by the way, but, yeah. um, you know, so I had lots of time. So I'm like, I'm just going to do a daily interview podcast. And I interviewed five, pretty much five people a week and put out a five day a week wow. interview podcast starting at 45 minutes. I mean, you want to talk about like, a like you're committing. And then very quickly, I started getting client work again and I just didn't have the time. So I pulled back on it. I, I knew I'd like, I'd rather do a, the best show I can once right. a week than do a media, you know. So right. I'm probably overstating the case, but my perspective is what is the, the best quality within reason? You don't want to overthink it. And, you know, you don't want to keep polishing something endlessly, but what is going to really make an impact? And if you can do that every day, great. Maybe small little snippets. That's kind of my thinking, like little bits of information right now, I think are easier for people. So maybe there's some value mm -hmm. in a smaller chunk every day than a bigger chunk once a week. But um, I don't know if that, I, I'm curious about your thinking on that too, because it is such a prevalent thing in marketing, especially. What, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm very similar as you when I teach and instruct uh, content marketing to small business owners. I often say, if you can be consistent, that's a really big key, but mm. consistency is different for everybody. So whatever, like you said, what you can commit to. If you can commit to once a week, then it's once a week. If it's once a month, then it's once a month. You know, yeah. you as you um, follow that trend, then your audience becomes um, conditioned to expect that once a month great post or video or blog post or whatever it is. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, again, it's it, for for me, it's about consistency and but you know, not to the degree of burnout. So, cause that's yeah. the last thing I, I want, cause I've, you know, I've burned out myself when I'm trying to produce content on a daily basis and it, it, yeah, it's just not a great idea. And for yeah. most people daily is really, really hard. So, but. And um, one thing I wanted to add to that too, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's an important point, especially for listeners of yours that aren't marketers or they're not used to the world of like you and I nice. kind of like just speak the lingo and we talk to people about this all the time. You know, you can, you can, it's not an either or thing when it comes to quantity sometimes, because you could look at it like, let's say you create, I think a podcast is a great example. I'm such a big proponent of podcasts. And one of the reasons is I love to talk pe to people like you, right? That's yeah. the, it's a fun thing. So for people like us that are talkers, it's a great thing, right? But, <laughs> yeah. You know, 
I think it's something that is such an easy to consume channel for people. It's a great format for people because they can listen to it when they're driving and while they're washing dishes. It's just a nice thing, right? But yeah. what's really cool about podcasts is that you can turn it into a whole lot of other stuff. I just mentioned before, I have a LinkedIn post in the blog, but, but you know, so, you know, you could take this interview and if it's you know you go like yeah marcus had a couple of good points in between those crazy you know <laughs> those crazy <laughs> opinions of his you could you know you turn those into little 25 second or a minute and a half long youtube videos like there's so much yep. you can do so it's not yeah. like if you feel like you can only really produce one piece of really good long form content a week or a month that doesn't mean you're limited to that one thing. You can cut that thing up and repurpose right. it in a lot of different ways that still takes some time. But now yeah. you're taking it and you're creating quantity out of something that inherently has quality baked into it. Right. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And that's those are a lot of the things that I teach small business owners, how to take that one piece and you know turn it mm. into 10, 15, 20 pieces of you know bite size consumable content. So fantastic. Absolutely. I love it. Awesome. Go Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I know. Yes. I think we have an idea of what the title of this episode will be. <laughs> Go Marcus. Go Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. I have one last question for you today. And that is how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your mm. social media content? Can you maybe share some examples of successful stories or campaigns you have created at, or participated in? Yeah, let's start with emotion. I think, you know, kind of ties back to what we were just talking about. This type of format captures emotion. You and I are having a yeah. human conversation. We're having fun doing it. There's emotion to that. Somebody listening, hopefully, is like the fly on the wall and enjoying that in some level, right? There's, so, so there's an yes. emotional component, again, baked into that. That, for me, when I create something, if I, I want that, even if it's in writing, I want to convey that to some degree in an authentic way. I don't try to like, just, you know, make something jazzy and like, you know, right. try to create fake emotion, whatever. Um, so that part I think is really important because ultimately anything you're doing there, even if you're doing like B2B technology sales or something like, you know, a product, it's, there's always an emotional component to selling something, right? So it's not just features and benefits. There's like, why does this matter to somebody? And it's, uh, mm -hmm. again, an emotional decision. Even people will tell you B2B isn't there. It's absolutely right. It just has to be yeah. backed up with a lot of logic too. So uh, as far as the, as far as storytelling, um, before we hit record, you and I were talking a little bit about story brand and, and mm -hmm. you know, that has been that format for people that aren't familiar. Story brand is like one approach to basically taking your, whatever would be your marketing messaging and framing it from a narrative perspective or framework. So it's like, basically there's a character, you know, um, the, 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 the hero of the story is not you, it's the customer, like little things yeah. like that. And I won't, you know, get into the details of all of it, but that kind of thing I've absolutely has, uh, influenced as much as possible, everything I'm doing as far as messaging and how I'm telling the story. Lately, I've realized that there's still a lot of learning I have ahead of me on that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really being able to tell stories in a, in a way that, you know, like even in a post to be able to share, like a lot of my favorite business books are books by journalists who are really good oh. at basically capturing a principle and telling it in the story of a historical figure or something. And that's really intriguing for people. So I think it's very important. I personally still have a long way to go to developing that skill and, um, but I think even this, again, going back to a podcast or whatever this is, like, you, you know, I'm telling you a story about something, yeah. right. And that yeah. story, it's a very natural thing. So we don't necessarily have to overthink it, but there is nuance to it. And, uh, there's yes. a lot of like little tiny details that really can make a big difference. I, I love what you just said though, to not overthink it because mm. then it, it becomes more of a chore. And it's, I, I personally feel storytelling needs to just kind of flow and it, the more you do it, it's like a muscle, right? The more yeah. you use it, the the stronger it becomes. So absolutely. Well, I don't, you know, and I don't know if you've come across this, it, you, especially a couple of years ago. I guess when the pandemic was really at the height of what pandemics do, 
it, a lot of people were on LinkedIn that hadn't been before. And there was this, have you heard the yes. term, have you heard the term broetry? Does that, do you know oh, that? Term? No, that's okay. a new one. <laughs> All right. So, so you'd see like influencers or people that wanted to be influencers, particularly on LinkedIn. This is where I spend most of my time social mm -hmm. media wise. I don't, I don't use Facebook really, but uh, it would be, it would be like, usually a dude and I'm a dude, so it's cool to be a dude, whatever. But like, it was usually <laughs> a dude. It was like, kind of like, like a heartfelt story. You know what I mean? Uh. Was, you know, back in the day, you know, let me tell you why my bat, my dad's my best friend. You know, it's like, it's a stuff that was like, you know, again, it's a taste thing, but it was stuff that was like very kind of intentional. Like it wasn't, I'm not saying it wasn't even authentic. I'm sure they had a dad, right? but <laughs> And there was this kind of like, you know, let me, you know, the, the best marketing, you know, lesson I ever learned was from my, you know, Chihuahua or something like that, you know, they can go a little bit like if your story is something like, like, hey, let me tell you about the time I got my first client. Like, that's a story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If the story is me looking around my office going, I wonder if I can use my ceiling fan as a metaphor for <laughs> for relationships, you know, what I learned from my ceiling thing about building relationships. That's when storytelling can feel a little contrived. So everybody, yes. we all have to do within our own kind of tastes and whatever, yeah. but that would be one thing I would be like, you know, be careful not to use it as too heavy or too, too blunt of an instrument because it could yeah. come very, very insincere and, and, and disingenuous. Yeah. Yeah. And then that gets dangerous for sure. Bro a tree. That's bro a tree. Maybe, maybe because I'm not a bro. Maybe I didn't see. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure, I'm sure as a, as a, you know, as, as I'm not a bro guy, I was not allowed into the cool bro click, <laughs> but I'm sure I'm guilty of it too, to some degree. Right. I'm, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I might've shared something that I thought was authentic that came off as bro a tree. <laughs> But uh, as long as you didn't use your ceiling fan, then I'm sure it was. Okay. No, 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 no. It, it was actually it was funny because I am I I can be kind of, um you know, tongue in cheek about stuff. Obviously, a yeah. few months ago, I, we had you know, we got a new puppy and my puppy finally learned how to go up and down the stairs. And I just was in a really snarky mood one Sunday and I decided to post <laughs> the video of it. And it started out with like, you know, 10 marketing lessons I learned from my puppy learning how to go up and down stairs. And of course, I, I put just a joke, you know, but it's, he's, yeah. very, he's very cute here. Enjoy the video, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. Again, I, you know, if if you're real authentic, you will put your foot in your mouth. It will happen. So <laughs> be warned. 100%. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, Marcus, I have enjoyed this so very much. Thank you for being a part of this podcast experience. And I will make sure that all of the listeners know exactly where to find you and to listen to your podcasts. And it's just been a real, real pleasure and, and a lot of fun. So thank you so much for being, being part of Making Sense of Social Media today. My pleasure. So glad to be here. <laughs>